Hi, this is Dr. Don, and I have another problem from the McClave text in my stat lab. This is problem 4.3.56. So let's read the problem, parse it, and see if we can understand what we're being asked to do and what we're given. It says the chances of a tax return being audited are about 18 in 1,000 if the income is less than 100,000 and 28 in 1,000 if an income is 100,000 or more. The first part says, what is the probability that a taxpayer with income less than 100,000 will be audited? The second part says, what is the probability that a taxpayer with income more than $100,000 will be audited? Let's bring up the good old Windows calculator here, and let's get the first part of part question A. We have a 18 and 1,000 chance, so we'll just put in 18 divided by 1,000, and that gives us a 1.8% chance, um, a 0.018 probability. The second part would be 28 divided by 1,000, and that's a probability of 0 0.028, 2.8% probability. This is part B, and it says if five taxpayers with incomes under 100,000 are randomly selected, what is the probability exactly one will be audited? That more than one will be audited. In order to answer this question, we need to recognize that this is a problem that is about a binomial random variable. And we recognize that because, in essence, there are just two possible outcomes. You can either be audited, that's success, or not audited, which would be a failure, I guess, from the standpoint of the IRS. And that there are n identical trials. And here we're saying that we've got five taxpayers are randomly selected, and then each one of those is either a success or failure, so those are identical. The next requirement is that the probability of success is constant, and we're assuming that the IRS is consistent, and that if the income is less than 100,000, then 1.8% of the people will be audited, so that's constant. And the trials are independent. There we're saying that taxpayer A does not impact taxpayer B decision by the IRS. Okay, I brought up StatCrunch, and remember, we normally start at Stat. Here we want the calculators, and we want the binomial calculator, and we bring up this dialog box. We have an N of 5, because we get 5 taxpayers there. Our probability, or our proportion, if you want to look at it that way, is 0 0.018, and we want to know about one taxpayer, we're going to select, first of all, equal, and the probability of exactly one person being audited is 0 .084, 0 .084. Now let's find out the probability that more than one, so we click on the drop-down, get the greater than symbol, and we see the probability of more than one taxpayer with income under 100,000 out of 5 is 0 0.0031, pretty small percentage. In Part C, we just need to do that same thing again with five taxpayers, but this time their income is 100,000 or more. So we go back into n equal 5, but we change the proportion or the probability to 0 0.028. And the probability of exactly 1 is 0.125. The probability of greater than 1 is 0 0.0074. On the last part, we're asked to determine the probability that no taxpayer is selected if 2 with incomes 1 under 100,000 are selected, and then also two with incomes more than 100,000 are selected. What is the probability that none will be audited? So in essence, we've got two trials here, and in each trial, we pick two taxpayers, so each 
we'll have the binomial probability of getting selected. And we have to remember that when we have two independent events like these, the two trials, the conjunction of those, in other words, what is the probability of both happening? We just multiply the probability of event A times the probability of event B. So let's bring up StatCrunch here. I'm going to calculator binomial again. And this time we've got 2, and the probability for less than 1,000 is 0 0.018, and we want exactly 0. So that probability is 0 0.96432. And I'm going to uh, bring up a second binomial calculator so I can remember those values. Again, we've got 2. This time it's 0 0.028. We've got a zero in there. We want an equal. And the probability is 0.94478. So in the conjunction here, the probability of both event A and event B, we need to multiply. Let's bring up our good old calculator there. And I'm going to key in 0.96438. Times 0.944784 equal, and that gives us an answer of 0.911 rounding. The last part just wants to know what assumptions we had to make, and we had to assume this was a binomial experiment, that we had two binomial random variables. That means there were two possible outcomes, success or failure. We had n identical trials, the probability of success is constant, and the trials are independent. So I hope this helps.